Hello again, welcome to my third in the series of procedural operations videos for the F-18 Echo Super Hornet provided by Vertical Reality Simulations aboard Viking 103. This video will uh, move on from describing cockpit systems and how to configure them and go into basic flight. I don't really have a plan for how we're going to start this out, but uh, I think probably the best thing to do is a basic traffic pattern using the systems uh, of the F-18 to its normal potential while in flight. So we'll go through that and uh, all the bits and bobs of that, how to uh, get set up for it properly, how to uh, you know move the aircraft in a, in a way that's uh, remotely accurate to how it's done in the real world. I don't intend to be uh, Ghost Rider by any means, but this will uh, hopefully show at least the, the concepts of what we're doing um, with some distraction from me having to reach over for a push to talk that's not on my joystick. Alright, so at this point uh, we have our nav data programmed in already. Everything's been brought up to speed. Um, so our pre-flight checks are fairly simple at this point. Uh, I do have the wings folded right now. That's because I'm going to want out there in that taxi area. I'm going to want high, ge high gain nose wheel steering. So I'm going to maintain high gain, which requires the wheels to be folded on this aircraft. Excuse me, requires the wings to be folded on this aircraft. Um, we're going to be taxiing pretty soon to the active runway. We're on a ready ramp, so... I'm going to set our ejection seat from safe to armed. Note right now the entire side of that is, is visible, indicating that it's in a safe position and cannot detonate if we uh, pull our ejection handle. It does work in this aircraft, so, you know, be careful with that. Ejection seat is now armed. Um, radar, INS all functioning. Lights are how we want them. All the engine systems have already been started. We have no alarm lights showing for any of that. Wings remain folded for now for high gain nose wheel. Parking brake still set. APU is back off, having cycled off after I started the engines. That's in my first video. Launch bar not needed. Um, flaps will now set to half. Standard for all takeoffs. Full fuel for this flight, so we're going to be a little heavy in our pattern, but uh, that should be about normal. We are safe. No air-to-air, air-to-ground modes selected. By the way, if you try to loose anything with weight on wheels, it won't let you. Um, the weight on wheels interlock prevents you from actually selecting or firing or properly arming any weapon system. Similarly, the radar is currently in the off mode. Um, I'm going to set that to its usual... Uh, long-range scan setting that I use. I am connected to the VATSIM network right now for this flight, so uh, nobody happens to be in the area I'm monitoring that as we go, but I tend to keep the radar on and keep myself uh, apprised of what's in the air around me when I fly. As you can see on the uh, left EDI, I've programmed a waypoint, which is the Maguire Vortac GXU. And I've already set our course selector to 240 degrees, which is roughly the heading of the runway, runway 24, that we were going to be using. Radio's already set to New York Center's frequency in case uh, he or she comes on, and the VATSIM Unicom frequency 2280 uh, for traffic calls. You won't see that happening. That'll be in the background on another screen. And as you can see, the only error that we have right now is wing unlock. So we're pretty much ready to go at this point. Our, uh, um, I've already been over my engine status and everything like that. I'm not going to bore you with going into all that. So we'll just uh, taxi out to the runway. Hopefully frame rate will allow me to function fairly well on this uh, potato of a computer. parking brakes off and we cycle up okay. Nose wheel to high, the uh, N key in uh, 
key command mode. And I am going to depart from the taxi line, so, you know, do excuse me. I'm just going to swing it around and get it onto the taxiway into the runway. As you can see, frame rate is very low, but uh, I don't have a new computer. It's from 2009, and if uh, you would like it to be better, I am taking donations. And yes, that will affect flight performance to some degree. Okay, as you can see, we're now short of the runway. Uh, I'm going to spread the wings again and ensure that we go back into uh, low gain nose wheel steering. We don't want to be high gain on the runway because if I uh, suddenly yank rudder to the left, we're going to put the uh, nose wheel perpendicular to the line of the runway, which is going to be a very bad day for us. And now you can see the uh, you know the purpose of uh, me setting my course selector so that I have a nice reference while I'm in the aircraft. I don't have uh, track IR or anything that'll make it easy for me to look out the uh, the butt end of the aircraft. Um, so I kind of do a little bit more reliance on uh, upfront reference than uh, many people do in this type of aircraft. Anyway, wings are uh, down and locked, and we're back in low gain nose wheel. Uh, one thing to ensure that you do prior to takeoff in this aircraft so that you don't end up drifting strangely while you're on your takeoff roll is to set takeoff trim. Uh, that combination is control T. And you will now see an alert comes up on the left EDI for advisory trim. That's set. We're now ready to make our roll. Traffic calls have been taken care of. onto the runway. Again, flaps are uh, at half and we are ready to roll, so let's go for it.
rotate it up to you now five degrees up. And 160 gear up, which we want to do rapidly because if you go above uh, 250 knots uh, with uh, gear still lowered, you tend to run into an issue. And uh, we're getting. Excuse me, we're getting an altitude warning, so I'm going to turn off our uh, altitude warner. And uh, we're now on our upwind leg of the traffic pattern, just like any other aircraft. And I've uh, reduced the range of the uh, left EDI, so you can see our uh, distances as we as we move around the traffic pattern. Just rolling around slowly, uh, maintaining a low uh, circuit at about uh, 600, a little bit low now. We'll fix that. Low speed alert, which is something worth watching for in this aircraft. It will tend to uh, drop below speed very, very suddenly, especially when you're turning at low altitude. Um, especially if auto flaps are engaged. Uh, for instance, as I come around now, we're now about a beam the uh, airport we're coming to beam the numbers in the opposite direction which is the 180 position uh, at that point in a traffic pattern the flaps are engaged so we are now to full auto flaps and the gear is put back down you can see we now get our, our ladder for our eight degree angle of attack that we should be having on approach uh, and I'll show you an interesting feature as we come around to this. I'll wait until we uh, get a little bit further out. And that's what I get for uh, talking. That put us into a stall condition. back around and I'll be uh, not talking for a minute. You may have noticed as I came around, I uh, touched Control R, which put me into the uh, approach auto throttle mode, uh, which is a very useful thing, especially for carrier landings, because you'll notice it locks your speed down to about 157 knots, and this is going to be a very low approach. I'm going to stop talking the next time around and uh, hopefully do this a little bit better. Uh, it should be a standard. We're at a an, eight degree angle of attack to our airflow, but uh, we're not, you can see we're a little low on the ladder for our approach. The uh, naval aircraft take a much higher approach to the runway, so we're gonna make this low approach go around and uh, take it again a little bit higher up. And I'm gonna shut up so it looks a little bit nicer. So to cancel ATC approach, we'll just make our low approach, pop it off and go back. Advancing the throttle takes care of canceling ATC approach and our flaps are back up. We're back in normal flight mode as our speed starts to come back up and we restore the pattern altitude.
to flying with uh, this low of a frame rate as well. A little bit ugly. Transition to downwind. Gonna let the speed and altitude bleed off a little bit back down to about 600 and uh, uh, closer to 200 knots, which is very slow for this aircraft in normal flight. Um, anything below 220 will allow the uh, ATC auto throttle to engage, but we don't want to do any sudden maneuvers with that working. Um, now, coming up being the numbers again, this is the traffic call point 180. Auto flaps are now engaged. We're below 250, so we can drop the gear gears now down, we're in landing configuration, and you can see the uh, attitude starts to come up of the aircraft as the flaps go down and the airspeed starts to dive off pretty precipitously because uh, the uh, flaps are starting to come into their own effect. And uh, you'll see again another ATC approach, um, the automatic throttle control, not air traffic control. Some people get that a little confused. And again, three to five miles will uh, transition uh, base to uh, final, and hopefully you'll see it happen. I'll shut up, and uh, hopefully it'll be a decent landing. see with ATC approach on the uh, pitch of the aircraft that you select uh, defines where you go. Your angle of attack of 8 degrees to airflow remains the same. And using that we can hop up a little bit and allow it to drop down into a normal approach to the runway. With naval aircraft it's flown onto the runway. It is a hard landing. It's designed to be. And close to dead center on the landing, we are uh, now in braking, slowing down as we get down below uh, 50 knots and the airspeed indicator stops working, we'll release the heavy braking and let it uh, 
turn into something more normal. We don't uh, skid and put a flat spot on the tires. As you can see, it is quite a hard landing. The aircraft is not flared on landing. It is basically flown directly onto the runway with a naval aircraft such as this, designed for carrier landings. Similarly, you may have seen the throttle twitch up and then back down again when we uh, when we landed. Good habit for any uh, aviator intending on doing carrier approaches as uh, you will have to get into that habit to avoid uh, the unfortunate incident of missing an arrestor wire, failing to advance the throttle and ditching in the ocean. Anyway, that's um, basic flight. I think I'll do another video uh, immediately following this of flight to a destination that will involve navigation from point to point using the DDIs and uh, managing that. Um, Perhaps after that we'll get into uh, tracking air targets and um, processing uh, information on other aircraft and how to uh, identify and respond to them and uh, address them whether they be threats or not. So flight with navigation next and then on to the big stuff that I'm sure everybody is waiting for. Hope you've enjoyed. Again, uh, video three of procedural operations, basic flight aboard Viking.